Category O, Lecture 12, Hecke Algebras. So the Hecke Algebra provides a combinatorial tool to study the problem of multiplicities in Category O. So this lecture will not be about Category O, but the aim of the lecture is to introduce Hecke Algebras as a necessary combinatorial tool. So let's first briefly describe our motivation. So let G be a fixed semi-simple finite dimensional Lie algebra with a fixed triangular decomposition. Associated to this triangular decomposition, we have the corresponding Weyl group and the associated BGG category O. Let O0 be the principal block of category O and P00 be the monoidal category of projective endofunctors of O0. We have already seen the categorification theorem due to Bernstein and Gilfand, which asserts that the action of this monoidal category of projective functors on the principal block of O categorifies the right regular representation of the group algebra of the Weyl group. So the standard basis in the Grotten D group of the principal block of category O is given by the classes of Verma modules. The natural basis in the split Grotten D ring of the category of projective endofunctors of O0 is given by the classes of indecomposable projective functors. We also have the new information is that the category O0 admits a Z graded lift. So this is due to the fact that, thanks to Sergey's combinatorial description, the associative algebra which describes the category O0 admits a natural grading by integers. So a natural question would be what kind of combinatorics properly describes the graded Grotten D group of category O and the corresponding graded action of the monoidal category of projective functors. In order to introduce the Hecke algebra, we need to start with the presentation of the Weyl group as a Coxeter group. So let S be the set of simple reflections in W. We know that simple reflections generate W. So let us denote by A S T the number of edges between the vertices which correspond to simple reflections S and T in the Dinkin diagram of G. Then we have the following defining relations of W with respect to the generating set S. So each element in S is an involution. And if we have two different elements in S, then their product has the order AST plus 2. So these are exactly the defining relations of W as a Coxeter group with respect to the generating set S. So alternatively, we can of course write that S square is equal to the identity. And then we have the braid relation that the product S, T, S, T, and so on is equal to the product T, S, T, S, and so on for any pair S and T of different reflections where the number of factors on each side is equal to AST plus 2. And, as already mentioned, these relations are called the braid relations. And the above presentation gives us a presentation of W as a Coxeter group. So now we can define the Hecke algebra, or which is sometimes called the Ivahori Hecke algebra. Consider the Laurent polynomial ring with integer coefficients in the variable v. So definition, the Hecke algebra H, which depends on the choice of the Coxeter group W and the set S of simple reflections, is defined as the associative algebra over the ring A, which is generated by elements H S, where S runs through the set of all simple reflections, and these elements are subject to the following relations. So first of all, we have the quadratic relation hs plus v times hs minus v inverse is equal to zero. And then we keep the usual braid relations from the presentation of the Weyl group. 
So the only difference is that the quadratic relations that each simple reflection in the while group has order two. So this relation is substituted by the following quadratic relation that instead of s square is equal to e, we write hs plus v times hs minus v inverse is equal to zero. So in this way, we can think of this relation as a one parameter deformation of the original relation because s square is equal to e can be written as s plus e times s minus e. In the first factor, we replace e by v and in the second factor, we replace e by v inverse. And also the usual notation let's denote by h sub e, the identity element of the Hecke algebra. So here are some very easy properties. Directly from the first relation, we can rewrite it in the following way, that h s squared is equal to v, e, v inverse minus v times h s plus h e. And also h s inverse, so each h s is invertible. This is because this term is not zero. And h s inverse is equal to h s plus v minus v inverse times h e. One needs to note that there are several normalizations of the Hecke algebra which appear and are used in the literature. So we follow the normalization as defined by Zergel in his paper in representation theory in 1997. There is an alternative normalization where we consider the ring of Laurent polynomials in the variable Q and the Hecke algebra is generated by Ts, where S is a simple reflection, and the relation is Ts plus one times Ts minus Q is equal to zero. And of course, the braid relations, which don't depend on the parameter. And this is the normalization, which is used in the original paper by Kajdan and Lustig in 1979, where the kajdan lustig combinatorics was created. So the connection between these two normalizations is that Q is equal to V to the power minus two and the generator HS is equal to V times the generator TS, which also can be rewritten as V to the power of the length of S times TS. Okay, so let's now talk about the standard basis of the Hecke algebra. For an element in the while group, for an element W, fix a reduced expression of this element. So let W equal to S1, S2, and so on, Sk, be a reduced expression. Then let us denote by HW the product of the corresponding elements HS1, HS2, and so on, HSk. Lemma, the element HW doesn't really depend on the choice of the reduced expression. So this follows directly from the well-known fact for Coxeter groups that any two reduced expressions of a given element can be connected by a chain of applications of the braid relations. So since the generators of the Hecke algebra satisfy the braid relations, it follows that this element HW really only depends on W. So in particular, one corollary from this is that if we multiply hx and hy under the assumption that the length of xy is equal to the length of x plus length of y, then the product of hx and hy is equal to the product of hxy. So this is because if we have two elements x and y, such that the length of the product is the sum of the lengths of the factor, then concatenating the reduced expressions of x with the reduced expression of y, we get a reduced expression of x, y. And so the claim follows directly from the definition. And the corollary is that the Hecke algebra H is a free module over our base ring A with bases given by the elements HW, where W is an element in W. So the set HW, so this basis is usually called the standard basis of the Hecke algebra. The Hecke algebra comes equipped with a very particular involution. So the claim is that there is a unique ring automorphism of the Hecke algebra 
which sends the variable v to its inverse and which sends each generator hs to the inverse of hs. So in order to prove this proposition, we need to check the defining relations for these generators hs inverse. So the braid relations are easy because we can just apply the involution to the braid relations and they go to the braid relations. And to check the quadratic relation, we have to observe the following. So the quadratic relation prescribes the element hs, the eigenvalues minus v and v inverse. So this means that the element hs inverse has eigenvalues minus v inverse and v. But since our bar involution swaps v and v inverse, it will change these eigenvalues back to minus v and v inverse. And this completes the proof. So let's note that directly from the definition, this map bar is an involution, which means that if you apply it twice, you get the identity map. So this map is called the bar involution of the Hecke algebra. And the most famous fact about the Hecke algebra, which is the basis of what is now called kajdan lustig combinatorics, is the following theorem. Due to Kashdan and Lustig from their original paper from 1979, it asserts that for any element w in the while group, there is a unique element hw underlined in the Hecke algebra, which has the following two properties. First of all, it is self-dual with respect to the bar involution. And second, when we write it, as a linear combination of the elements in the standard basis, it has a form hw plus, and then the linear combination of all elements in w, but now where coefficients are polynomials in v without constant term. So the proof which we will give in a moment actually shows that the element hw underlined is of the form hw plus the linear combination of elements hx with coefficients which are polynomials in v without constant term, where x is strictly smaller than w with respect to the Bruja order. So because of this form, it follows that the transformation matrix from the standard basis to the kajdan lustig set is an upper triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal, in particular, it follows that this set is an A basis of the Hecke algebra. And this basis is called the kajdan lustig basis of the Hecke algebra. So let's now go to the proof of the existence of the kajdan lustig basis. We start with some preliminaries. We will construct the elements HW underlined by induction on the lengths of W. So the basis of the induction is the case where w is equal to e, and in this case we can just take he underline is equal to he. So the, the first step of the induction is very easy to check, that for a simple reflection s, the element hs plus v he can be taken as hs underlined. So it obviously has the correct form, and just applying the bar involution, one can check that this is invariant under the bar involution. So the crucial step in the induction process is the following observation, that for an element w in w and a simple reflection s, the product of the standard basis element hw with the element hs underlined can be computed in the following way. So in the case where Ws is Bruja greater than W, this product equals Hws plus V Hw. In the case where Ws is Bruja smaller than W, the product equals Hws plus V inverse Hw. So the case when Ws is Bruja greater than W follows directly from the definition. So the case where Ws is Bruja smaller than W 
follows if we use the fact that hs squared is equal to he plus v inverse minus vhs. So this is an easy property of the cartan lustig basis, which we already observed. So in the case ws smaller than w, we can write hw as uh, h something times hs at the end. And so when we multiply this hs on the right hand side with hs plus v he, then we will have hs squared, which we can rewrite in this way. And then via an easy computation, we get exactly this formula. And this also explains how the inverse appears here. So with this observation in mind, let us prove the induction step for the existence. So assume that we have an element w, which is strictly Bruja greater than the identity, and assume that we have already constructed the elements hx underlined for all x which are Bruja smaller than w. So since w is strictly greater than the identity, there is a simple reflection s such that ws is Bruja smaller than w. Consider the element hws underlined times hs. So this element, because of the definition of the kajdan lustig basis and the form how hws underlined look, looks like, and also because of the form how hs underlined looks like, so this element has the form hw plus hx times px, over all x, which are Bruja smaller than w, where now px are polynomials in V, possibly with constant term. So the point is that in the requirements for the cartan lustig basis elements, we have here polynomials in V without constant term. But since when we multiply with hs underline, we need to use this proposition sometimes we might encounter some v inverse, which might decrease the smallest non-zero degree of v. And so we had something without constant term, and applying v inverse, we get something with constant term potential. So here, the main observation is that we have this kind of form for the element, where now these polynomials might have constant term. So in order to deal with this, we simply subtract the corresponding cartan lustig basis elements with the coefficients being the evaluation of these polynomials at zero. So in other words, we kill the corresponding constant terms. So we define HW underlined as the above product HWS underlined times H underlined S but we subtract the linear combination of hx underline over all x, which are Bruja smaller than w, with the coefficient given by the evaluation of these polynomials px at zero. So this element, by construction, it's a linear combination of self-dual elements for the bar involution, so it is self-dual, and by construction, it has the corresponding form because we have killed everything which has constant term. So this element HW underlined has a form HW plus the linear combination of HXs with coefficients which are polynomials in V without constant term. So this completes the induction and shows that the elements HW underlined exist. So now let us prove uniqueness. And uniqueness follows from the following lemma. The claim is that if we have an element H, which is a linear combination of standard basis elements with coefficients which are polynomials in V without constant term, and if we assume that such an element H is self-dual, then it must be zero. The proof, of course, by construction, which we already did on the previous slide. So we have constructed the elements HW underline, and these elements form 
a basis of the Hecke algebra. So in particular, each standard basis element Hx has the following form. So we can write that it belongs to the set Hx underline plus the linear combination of Hy underlines over Y, which are Bruja smaller than X, with coefficients arbitrary elements in A. From this form, it follows that the bar involution of Hx has the form Hx plus the linear combination of Hy's over all Y's, which are Bruja smaller than X, with arbitrary co coefficients in A. So if we write H, as a linear combination of standard basis elements with polynomial coefficients, then we can choose y to be maximal with respect to the Bruja order, such that the corresponding coefficient hyv is non-zero. So if h is non-zero, then we can choose such a y. Then the condition that h should be self-dual with respect to the bar involution would imply that this polynomial HYV must be self-dual with respect to the bar involution. But this clearly contradicts the fact that this is a polynomial without constant term. The bar involutions shift such polynomials into polynomials in the inverse without the constant term. The obtained contradiction proves this lemma. And this lemma clearly implies uniqueness of the kashtan lustig basis since if we have two different bases, the difference between the corresponding elements of the bases must be such an element H, which is self-dual and has this form. So it must be zero. So this completes the proof of existence and uniqueness of the kashdan lustig basis of the Hecke algebra. Let us do some examples. So here is an example of the symmetric group S3. The symmetric group S3 consists of six elements, the identity, the simple reflections S and T, their products ST and TS, and the longest element W0, which is STS and also TST. Directly from the construction, the kashdan element HE underlined is equal to HE. And also directly from the proof, the kashdan element HS underlined is HS plus VHE, and HT underlined is HT plus VHE. So now let us compute their product. So if we multiply S HS underlined with HT underlined, then we get the element HST plus VHS plus VHT plus V squared HE. And this element has already the necessary form. All elements here have coefficients that are polynomials in V without constant term. So therefore, this is exactly the element HST underlined. And to obtain HTS underlined, we just take the same element by switch the roles of S and T. On the last step of the induction, we should take HST underlined and multiply it with HS underlined. The computation shows that it will be the sum of eight terms, so HW0 plus VHS squared plus VHTS plus V squared HS plus VHST plus V squared HS plus V squared HT plus V cube HE. So from our simple properties of the Hecke algebra, we know that VHS squared is equal to VHE plus 1 minus V squared HS. So when we substitute this element VHS squared by this linear combination, we in particular kill minus V squared HS with this V squared HS. So in particular, we will get this constant term element 1, HS, in the sum. And so because of our induction process, the element HW0 underlined is equal to HST underlined, HS underlined, minus HS underlined. So therefore, the kashdan element HW0 underlined is the sum of HW0 plus VHTS plus VHST plus V squared HS plus V squared HT plus V cube HE. 
So now we can define the kashdan lustig polynomials. So we can write every element of the kashdan lustig basis as a linear combination of elements of the standard basis with coefficients, which are polynomials in V. Almost all these polynomials are without constant term, but some of them have constant term, which correspond to x is equal to w. And these polynomials are called the kashdan lustig polynomials. In the S3 example in the previous slide, we can just write down the corresponding coefficients and collect them in the following table. So the kashdan lustig polynomials for this ordering on the group S3 are collected in this table. So here the first column are coefficients in HE underlined, so it's just HE. The second column collects coefficients in HS underlined, the third column coefficients in HT underlined, the fourth column coefficients in HST underlined, so here we have coefficients of HTS underlined, and the last column consists of coefficients of HW0 underlined. So we also can now define the very important combinatorial tool of the kashdan lustig combinatorics, which is called the mu function. So the kashdan lustig mu function, so this is a mu function in two variables, both are elements in the while group, and this function takes integer coefficients, and it is defined in the following way. So if x and y are two elements in the while group, such that x is Bruja smaller than y, then we define mu as the evaluation at zero of the derivative of the kashdan lustig polynomial hxy. So in other words, so this is the coefficient at the linear term of the kashdan lustig polynomial hxy. So if x is greater than y, we define it similarly, but just swap the roles of x and y. So the new function is defined so that it is symmetric in the variables. And if x and y are not Bruja related, we set mu to be zero. So in other words, we can say that the new function mu x y is a coefficient at the linear term of the sum of the kashdan lustig polynomials h x y and h y x. And its significance is motivated by the fact that it is exactly this function which describes the coefficient which appears in the subtraction of the induction step when we take hws underlined times hs underlined and subtract a linear combination of h axes where x smaller than w. So this px of zero, this is exactly the value of a certain mu function. So for example, in our example of the symmetric group S3, the new function is given by the following table. So it's a symmetric matrix where we just write down the coefficients of the linear term. So the original matrix is here. So we have the linear terms right here, and then we have to reflect with respect to the main diagonal in order to get a symmetric matrix. So let us now define the dual kashdan lustig basis. To do this, we first define the symmetrizing trace form tau on the Hecke algebra with coefficients in A in the following way. The value of tau at a linear combination of standard basis elements with some coefficients is given by taking the coefficient at h e. So the form tau allows us to define an a bilinear form on the Hecke algebra by the following rule. So the value of this form at the pair a b is equal to tau of a b. And directly from the definition, it is very easy to see that this form is symmetric and non-degenerate. For details, one could take a look at Masses' book about Hecke algebras and Shu algebras. So since this form is symmetric and non-degenerate, there is a unique A basis in the Hecke algebra, which is usually denoted by HW underlined hat which satisfy the condition that hx underlined 
and then taking the form with HY inverse underline head is equal to the Kronecker delta XY. So this basis is usually called the dual kashtan lustig basis. Here is an S2 example. So in the case of the symmetric group S2, we have two elements E and S, and the claim is that the dual kashtan lustig basis element which corresponds to E is the element HE minus VHS, and the dual kashtan lustig basis element which corresponds to S is exactly the HS. Here is the verification. So if we compute tau of HE underline times HE underline head, this is a tau of HE times this element HE minus VHS. So this is equal to tau of HE minus VHS, which is one, the coefficient at HE. So if we compute tau of HE times HS underlined head, so this is a tau of HE times HS, which is just tau of HS, which is zero. Next, let us compute tau of HS underlined HE underlined head. This is tau of HS plus VHE times HE minus VHS. So here we will have the coefficient V at HE coming from this product, but then we will also have minus V times HS squared and hs squared produces us he, so minus v kills this appearance of v, and we get zero. And finally, tau applied to hs underlined hs underlined head is the tau of hs plus vhe times hs. So this is tau of he plus v inverse hs, which is again one. So this completes the S2 example. And for the S3 example, we just give the answer. So if we take the while group S3, the symmetric group S3, as we already had before today, then the element HE underlined head is the following linear combination, HE minus VHS minus VHT plus V square HST plus V square HTS minus V cubed HW0. HS underlined head is HS minus VHST minus VHTS plus V square HW0. And HT underlined head is obtained by swapping the roles of S and T simply. The element HST underlined head is HST minus VHW0. And HTS head is similar. And finally, the element HW0 underlined head is the standard basis element HW0. So let us finish today with computing one explicit formula for the kashtan lustig basis element. The claim is that the kashtan lustig basis element, which is associated with the longest element of the while group, it has the following form. It's a linear combination of the standard basis elements which, with coefficients which are monomials in V, and the exponent is LW0 minus LW. So to prove this formula, let us denote the right-hand side by H. So it's very clear that this element has the necessary form. So what we need to do, we need to prove that it is symmetric under the bar involution. So for any element S in S, we clearly have from this form that H times HS underlined is equal to H times V plus V inverse. This follows directly by an easy computation from this explicit formula. So in particular, if we take the bar to this equality, we get that H bar, HS underlined, is equal to V plus V inverse H bar. At the same time, it is very easy to see that the set of all eigenvectors in H, common eigenvectors for all HS underlined with the eigenvalue V plus V inverse, simply coincides with the linear span of the element H. 
but then it means that H overlined belongs to this linear, a, a linear span of H, and comparing some coefficients, it follows that H overline, so H bar, is equal to H. So this completes the proof of this explicit formula. So this particular cajdan lustig element has very nice form. So this formula has the following consequence. Let W prime be a parabolic subgroup of W. We can observe the following. Given an element in W prime, if we want to construct the corresponding cajdan lustig basis element in the Hecke algebra of W, the inductive construction only involves elements from the standard basis corresponding to the elements in W prime. In particular, this construction can be carried out in the Hecke algebra for W prime. Consequently, if we denote by W zero prime the longest element in W prime, then the kajdan lustig basis element HW zero prime underlined in the Hecke algebra of W will have the form the sum over all elements in W prime HW with the coefficient v to the power the difference of the lengths of W zero prime and W. We have already seen two special cases of this formula. First of all, HS underlined is HS plus VHE, so this is exactly this kind of form for the parabolic subgroup generated by S, and also for the symmetric group S3, we saw that HSTS underlined is equal to HSTS plus VHST plus VHTS plus V squared HS plus V squared HT plus V cubed HE. So we finish some, with some questions for PhD students. Question number one, prove that the quotient of H modulo the ideal generated by V minus one is isomorphic to the group algebra of the Weyl group. Question number two, prove that the bar involution of the standard basis element HW is equal to the inverse of HW inverse, and that the cajdan lustig polynomial HXY is equal to the cajdan lustig polynomial HX inverse Y inverse. Find a non-monomial cajdan lustig polynomial for S4. Hint, look at involutions. Question number four. Prove with all details that tau is symmetric in the sense that tau of AB is equal to tau of BA for all elements A and B in H. And use this to give a full proof for the claims that the corresponding bilinear form is symmetric and non-degenerate. Question number five. Check with all details the dual casualistic basis for the group S3. Thank you and see you next week.